What problem is often overlooked in apocalyptic movies slash TV shows that could kill you? As bad as the show Revolution's overall plotting and pacing was, they generally did a good job of thinking about these kinds of little inconsistencies. There's a minor character who was a doomsday prepper before the apocalypse, but he didn't stock up enough on antibiotics. As a result, his daughter died of tetanus that he was unable to treat. A warlord kidnaps prisoners for blood because his wife has diabetes and needs constant transfusions of blood with sufficient insulin in it to survive. There's a doctor who keeps a collection of moldy fruit to harvest penicillin mold from it and make penicillin. Some characters try to go into an old subway tunnel but nearly die because of lack of sufficient airflow down there without modern HVAC systems. I really like the subway tunnel one never thought of that. It would explain the hallucinations in the stand, Stephen King, when they were traversing the Lincoln Tunnel, if I recall correctly. Those of us with crappy eyesight. Contacts only last so long. If your glasses break, you're screwed. Like the guy in Twilight Zone who just wanted time to read. It's not fair. Clean drinking water I don't think people really appreciate how much water is needed for a group of people to survive. Isn't like 3 days you can be without water. Whoever can last the longest would be the survivors. Natural selection I guess. 3 minutes without oxygen 3 days without water 3 weeks without food. Of course this depends on the person, location, climate, and other circumstances. Some could last longer, others shorter. Diarrhea. So many things can cause it, and it used to be, well, still is in the least developed countries, quite lethal, mostly for babies and children. I have minor ibes, so I poop when I'm stressed. I'm a goner. Wait stress crapping is a symptom of ibes? I thought everyone just had that. They never talk about optometry what am I going to do if my glasses break in the apocalypse. I'm fricked I can't see crap without these they won't last me forever. Should be plenty of bespectacled corpses around. I remember a few years ago there was startup or something that was making glasses filled with a fluid that allowed self-tuning of the recipe. Well, this might help if you score something between 0.5D and 2.0D myopia. How high are the probabilities of finding corpses with 6.5D short-sightedness glasses? Not sure if this made sense, English is not my first language and I never learned the proper terms about short-sightedness. Natural disasters. You'd have no clue if a hurricane, flash flood, typhoon, monsoon, or other sharknado events were coming. I didn't even know what to do when my fridge broke. I just moved. Classic shell stop move. Everyone always seems to know where to go. If it were me, I'd die because I can't find my way back to base or something. I always assume directionally challenged people like me already died. Like running for the door and smacking into a wall, followed by the zombies eating you. Snoring. 100%. I think about this all the time. Anyone who snores after the zombies come must be exiled. But most will die quickly. I wonder about this in wars. My ex-BF was a marine and he snored. He never had a combat deployment or anything, but it made me wonder about the guys who snore and get a combat deployment. What if they're in the field and not at base camp? So yes this is a thing. My nana's brothers, my great great uncle, all fought in WW2. One of them was paired up with another soldier in a foxhole and alternating sleep shifts. His partner snored so goddamn bad he was sure this guy was gonna give their location away. He said he hated to do it, but he reported him in the morning, and by the next evening he was gone. No word on where he went, but it was understood. They couldn't have that kind of liability. Footwear. Wrong footwear. Damaged footwear. Lack of socks. Wet feet. Open wounds. Once your feet are screwed so is the rest of you. I agree, but seriously, you could hit any strip mall and find 5,000 pairs of shoes in your size. Multiply that times all the strip malls and stores and you'll be fine on footwear. Ugly? Maybe, but fine. I'd say clean socks and underwear would be 100x the problem that footwear would be. Minor injuries, lack of hygiene, infection. Even though it was riddled with problems to focus on, when Game of Thrones was happening I remember being really bothered by the scene where Arya Stark gets stabbed about 10 times in the gut and falls into a river. Not only did they downplay the mortal wounds to her abdomen, 
the subsequent infection would have destroyed her. There is a distinct lack of worry about clean water. Also, in almost every conflict in history, disease has killed more people than the actual war. You rarely see a flu wipe out half of the people in a zombie movie, but honestly, it would. The Walking Dead actually had a whole part about them all getting sick with Spanish flu I think. Their pigs were infected which spread to the humans. They had to kill all of them and lose a lot of food too. Considering how I had to take my fiance to the air this morning because of what should have been a minor UT that traveled to her kidneys. And UTs can be so easy to get to. It'd be so much worse if you don't have access to proper hygiene things or pee after sex. Gasoline has a shorter shelf life than is portrayed in these movies slash TV shows, so after a year nobody would really be driving anywhere. It wouldn't necessarily kill you, but it's one of those things that bothers me because it's never really addressed. Mad Maximum addressed this and made it a plot device. The need for new gas is the premise of Road Warrior. As someone who had a severe hemorrhage, appendicitis, a severe infection and an emergency wisdom tooth extraction in the last 11 months alone, I'd be dead within days. Any infection, any chronic disease, food poisoning, allergies basically all those things that health could provide that we take for granted. Many apocalyptic books either address or use it as a plot point. You either have what I call the and this is when the diabetics die. Paragraph or it is used as plot points in books like Lucifer's Hammer or One Second After. Any good apocalyptic books you recommend? Wow thanks for all the recommendations everyone. Lack of dental care. A dental infection can take you out right quick. And without treatment that hurts. And mouth infections can very easily spread to the heart. At which point, that hurts very quickly become GRRRRKKK, dead. My parents did not believe in preventive dental care when I was growing up. Their policy was repairs are temporary, pull the problem tooth. As a result, I'm down 5 or 6 teeth that probably could have been saved, and the rest are a hot mess that will cost me tens of thousands to fix. I can distinctly remember several occasions in which my teeth became infected, and let me be the first to tell you folks, I would have eaten a bullet if that option had been available to me. It was some of the worst pain I have ever experienced. I could feel the infection spreading from my jaw outward, or at least imagined I could. Without antibiotics, I legitimately believe one of those infections could have been the end of me. They are no joke. I don't know if it could kill you, but the stench of death is horrendous and not an insignificant thing. In any disaster situation where someone has died and it starts becoming days long, things would be getting nasty. Over time people would get used to how foul everything would smell, but for a while it would be terrible. I always think of trash. Like, any bins with a garbage in it is gonna get real rank. People's homes to 99% of Americans have a trash can in their kitchen with food waste in it. They show the character scavenging in home, but no commentary on the sludge filled fridge or trash can not 3 feet away. Or the general smell of dead folks and trash sludge while running around outside? I swear they never pull anything nasty out which is strange. Having just sprained an ankle, I'm guessing sprained ankles. I broke my shoulder a couple years ago 8 weeks of keeping it immobile, which would maybe be doable in an epoch if I was with a large enough group of people, but 12 weeks of PTPT said in the past it would just become almost a lame limb. Yeah I broke my collarbone and really hate surgery, the doc told me it'll suck to use and be barely functional and that was enough to convince me to go with the surgery. Dust from destroyed buildings. Just watch the two latest Godzilla movies, and aside from all the other things that could have killed folks, staring at monsters that are destroying buildings and kicking up all sorts of dust and other air debris while staring open-mouthed is a great way to get lung damage slash encounter breathing issues. This should absolutely be the top. If you go back and watch the footage from 9 over 11, it's incredible just how much dust a couple buildings spew when they collapse, and that's not even counting the fires and flooding. Everyone is saying clean water, and other pretty obvious ones that aren't really plot holes as much as convenience, since the main characters won't die from dehydration, but severe lung damage caused by dust. 
yeah, that's not even on the radar and almost every one one of those apocalyptical movies has a scene where a famous building comes crashing down. I inhaled silica dust Friday and now I'm laid up with covered like symptoms, but with a negative test. Doctor said it was likely an upper respiratory infection and that's just from cutting a few lines in concrete pipe. Yeah, falling buildings are gonna frick people over. I don't know how this hasn't been mentioned yet, but it's common sense that is almost always overlooked in movies and TV. Humans are way more physically fragile and squishy than you might think. Based on John McClane and other invincible action heroes, who take damage and do things that would break or catastrophically cripple a normal person, movies are a poor source of information for deciding what to do and what could happen to your body should you somehow falsely think you're the main protagonist of an apocalypse movie. Indoor firefight without hearing protection? You're probably deaf now. Jumping off a building to catch a wire? Kiss your fingers and door. Lower extremities goodbye, assuming you land on your feet. Taking a drink bottle to the head. That's probably a concussion. Movies have made us think we are a lot more durable than we really are. Getting hit in the head hard enough to break a larger glass bottle like a whiskey bottle or something could very well kill you. It would definitely give you a concussion, could possibly give minor skull fracture, and the cuts you may sustain could easily blind you or cause enough bleeding from your scalp that you could very well just slip into unconsciousness and die. Sepsis. One thing I never see on these threads is alcohol withdrawal. You take a random selection of the population and a significant number of them will die from withdrawals if easy booze isn't available. This is also the exact reason why liquor stores got essential business status when the pandemic started. Parasites. Not xenomorphs, but tapeworms, ringworms, etc. There are a lot of diseases that used to be endemic before modern sanitation wiped them out. One working thought on autoimmune diseases, of which I have several, is that humans no longer having worms and other gut creepy crawlers like we used to has contributed to those autoimmune diseases. Carry on. Everyone with a major health issue, if they survived the apocalyptic start, they won't see the finish. Take me for instance, I'm a transplant patient, kidney transplant, without meds I would be dead within 3 to 5 days due to massive infection. Same with diabetics not having insulin, asthmatics not having inhalers, and other kind of disease and genetic issues. On the money. I'm a heart transplant recipient, and I was having this exact conversation with someone last week. My transplant team said that if I went cold turkey on the anti-rejection meds, it would only be a few months before I would start feeling signs of rejection. And then it would only be matter of time. And even if I could scrounge say, a year's supply, that is gonna take up a considerable volume in my backpack and all the meds start expiring and begin to not work at full efficiency after about a year and with nothing more being manufactured. And this does not even address all the meds that need to be refrigerated, like insulin. Sorry, diabetics. Basically, I would have about 2 years in a best case scenario, and then I'm done. So yeah, you goddamn right I'm checking every pharmacy I find lol. I think it depends on what kind of apocalypse we are talking about. But at the top of my head, one infection slash any skin break is a potential killer. Antibiotics don't have a very long shelf life, and harvesting penicillin from mold is both highly inefficient and most bacteria nowadays are resistant to it anyway. That being said, antibiotic resistance isn't gonna last more than a few years, since it will not offer a survival advantage to bacteria after a while. Even without any cuts, or even with a good immune system, STDs will probably get you fast. Rapists aren't gonna last with a good number of them getting HIV infections. To insulin dependent diabetes, insulin can't be frozen and doesn't last more than a year in the fridge and very sensitive to temperature changes. Type 2 diabetes people should be fine for. Most with a sudden lack of carbohydrates and higher physical activity. 3 subways, a lot of people will go there and be suffocated to death. 4 lack of glasses will kill many but it's an easy fix by raiding places with stockpiles of them and prescription shouldn't be perfect for survival so there is a chance. A good apocalypse prep is to have prescription protection anti-shock glasses. 5 wildlife, most of us have no idea how to survive in the wild at all. Bears and wolves will get a good number of people. 
6. Childbirth. Giving birth in the absence of modern healthcare will be a massive risk for any woman, and any woman having sex will probably have no way to avoid it, since contraceptives won't last. Also, child mortality will shoot up. 7. Allergies, and anything that modern healthcare fixes one way or another. 8. Lack of clean water and exposure. Most of us can't light a fire if our life depended on it. This is a small plot point in the Black Tide Rising book series by John Ringo. The majority of survivors are on boats, going around and finding other boats, killing the zombies on them to loot anything they can, and rescue anybody that might be still alive. Considering the fall happened roughly in the span of a couple weeks, it was unintentionally released by a weapon, most people, that survived by getting locked into cargo spaces of things like warships and whatnot were all in a whelp, we are probably dead soon. Phase at roughly the same time. And a non-trivial portion of such groups with men, women, and a bit of privacy, decided to try and feel some small comfort by having sex. Such groups end up rescued, and joining the main group. So the issue is a fairly substantial portion of their female population is pregnant with due dates that are largely spread across about 6 weeks. While they do have supplies and some trained doctors, the situation is less than ideal. Pretty much this, and you know what's even worse? A large number of women living today can't give birth naturally anyway, so death for them is almost a certainty. Childbirth. Already one of the most dangerous things a person can do, carrying a child to full term, and giving birth without proper medical care for either the mother or the baby, well all you gotta do, is look at your history books, or your average developing country, most of which still have better medical care than you're getting in the walking dead, and now the mother has to push her insides back in, and run from some zombies, done for. This was my issue with the movie Acquired Place it's one thing, to have to survive an apocalypse, but to do so against an enemy that detects by hearing and decide to have a baby in the middle of that, how you gonna keep him or her quiet, completely disregarding the birth itself assuming the proper drugs are available? When I was watching that movie I just decided to believe that she got pregnant before the monsters appeared. Can you imagine actually deciding to have a baby while all of that is going on? Typhus or cholera. These two diseases can run roughshod over a population group in days. Also rampant mosquito overpopulation, because nobody is spaying to keep them in check. More people die from mosquitoes each year than anything else. There is a laundry list of all the diseases mosquitoes can transmit. To help control the mosquito population, have your mosquitoes spayed or neutered. It has been addressed somewhat in some TV shows and movies, but how women would have to figure out how to deal with their periods. Oh god and imagine getting a yeast infection, BV or a UT in the apocalypse, where you can't treat it and can't properly clean yourself. I think I'd just end it. A lot of UTs can be deadly if not treated. Sunblock. But no one ever has severe sunburns. Or skin cancer for that matter. Dogs. We hardly ever see packs of dogs roaming around on these shows, but it's very possible. You could have feral packs running around competing with humans for food. Pests. Vermin. Parasites. Mold. Plant overgrowth. We let our garden run wild for a couple of months and plants have invaded several areas, in an apocalypse it would get much worse. Might not kill you, but it could be a real nuisance. Yesterday a poor girl in Italy was ripped to shreds by a pack of feral dogs. You don't have to wait for the apocalypse for that. I got chased by a pack in Thailand. One of the scariest moments of my life. Read the chapter entitled The Second Plague in the Stand by Stephen King. The most thought-provoking chapter of King literature I have ever read. That chapter is genius and it's a crime that it wasn't more fully portrayed in either miniseries. I always liked how the second plague was so much worse in the developed world with up to 25% dying in the US and only 2% in Peru. Fresh, clean water. While it might look clear, most streams in the US have nasty chemicals in them or else full of bacteria that we are not used to drinking. If you don't purify it, and that requires more than just boiling or running through a Brita filter, you will likely get sick. That right there might kill you. America runs on a system of recipe where most things are stocked daily or weekly. We don't have warehouses full of spare parts or cans of food just waiting. If you miss out on the initial scrabble for food and equipment you might be screwed forever. 
Getting a hardware store and all the tools and spare parts inside would be a godsend as 90% of that is manufactured only as needed, so supply will dry up soon. Same goes for things like ammunition, medicine, and all preserved. Foods. Once the supply in shops and stores are gone, there won't be any more just lying out there. Not to mention, that often has expiration dates, and if it sits too long can rot, become poison, or explode, hey, even cans of food might explode, if left to rot long enough. Had a rolled can of pineapples detonate in my cupboard a few years back. Never did get the smell out. As for food, better learn how to forage, farm, and hunt as most farms now use proprietary seeds that will not produce viable seeds for the next crop, that way farmers keep buying seeds each year. So even if you found a empty farmer's field, unless you can find viable seeds, next year you won't have crap. Same goes for fruit trees, you can't just spit out seeds and expect to have plants next year. Agriculture is a lot harder, especially in large enough quantities to feed groups than the backyard vegetable garden. As a backyard gardener, I'd add pesticide and herbicide. DIY organic methods are extremely labor intensive and not very reliable unless you really know what you're doing. Nature is in constant competition for your tasty fruits and veggies. If you were completely dependent on your plot to survive, you'd need the advantage of chemicals. The stupidity of others. TV shows and movies leave out that during the zombie apocalypse, there will be a small but very vocal part of the population that insists it's all a hoax and refuse to follow any of the safety protocols. Did you barricade your town? One of these fools will go unlock the gates in the middle of the night just to prove there are no zombies until they end up with their head in a zombie's jaws, lamenting the hoaxes and belatedly shouting for everyone to barricade their houses and towns. 18 month ago I would not agree. After a bunch of covidiots later, yes, you are right madam slash sir. Being crushed by a stampede of people. In Attack on Titan two major side characters are simultaneously killed in a stampede of PPL running away from the Titan brawl. Couldn't think of a better name. It was seven ninths of them. Mosquitoes in zombie movies. Right? Mosquito bites zombie, then bites you. Suddenly boom you're a zombie. Everyone walks around with brain splattering guns, but you never see anyone with a colossal can of DEET, which is exactly what I would be carrying in a zombie apocalypse. Are you from the future? In general, the number one killer in a survival situation, apocalyptic scenario fits perfect, is concessions for comfort. Many people will die due to a lot of the reasons postulated here, simply because they were not willing to push themselves hard enough to mitigate these issues. I've been working hard for the last 6 hours, I'd rather take a rest than continue to harvest, until it is too dark to do so. Digging a latrine 100 yards away from my streamside campsite is too difficult, I'll do it closer. To be fair most people won't know that you need to do that. Lack of a viable breeding population of humans remaining. It takes 160 very carefully chosen, think planned dark ship individuals, to have adequate genetic diversity, or more like 500, if we are throwing people in at random. A few months ago I saw Snowpiercer for the first time, and couldn't help, but thinking they tried so hard to shoehorn in every throwaway social issue they could think of, yet neglected to consider that at the end, there are maybe a dozen survivors, on the whole damned planet. The happy ending may be a victory for the tail enders, but it would literally mean the extinction of humanity. In the comics the train was much bigger and carried a sufficient population at the start. The fact that most people do not know how to grow food, much less preserve it. People 300 years ago knew how to process food at each step from seed to field to cellar. That knowledge is almost completely lost, at least in the western world. People hoard guns thinking they are going to live off the land, but that isn't how it works. That big deer you kill will likely spoil before you eat it all. And wild animals are not numerous enough to support our populations and we would quickly be reduced to eating rats and pigeons. In The Walking Dead they were growing tomatoes. That is a huge waste of space and resources. They need to focus on grain and potatoes. Tomatoes and broccoli have almost no calories. No time for such luxuries in an apocalypse. Similarly, on Naked and Afraid, a guy spent half a day fetching some some citrus fruit. He wasted a ton of calories for very little return. Why? He was restless. 
he tapped out soon after. You see the same thing on alone. The winners tend to be people that are okay with moving very very little, even if it's boring f. I think the most depressing movie ever, The Road, did an excellent job with the more realistic version of an apocalyptic situation. Movies usually don't get to me, but that one did, and I can't watch it twice. The overwhelming bleakness of it combined with the realness of it depress me. Anything apocalypse I'd be dead in first week. Given some of the stuff that happens in those stories I'm not certain that's a bad thing. Personally, if I'm going to die at some point during a major disaster or apocalypse I think I'd prefer to go out in the first wave. Yeah that's my wife's opinion. She'd rather not endure months to years of desperate yawn and horror, just to end up dying anyway of dysentery, malaria, starvation, etc.